Hey all y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carrie. This is where I talk about knitting. My tips, my tricks, my opinions, and my preferences. And today, we're gonna get wild. I have a project, it needs to be grafted together, so I'm gonna do it live for you right now. And hopefully this will give you an idea of how grafting works and how great it is, because grafting is great. If you wanna see some knitting in the wild, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up, and let's craft. Knitters don't always love to craft. And I think the reason knitters don't always love to craft is a couple of reasons. One, it involves using the tapestry needle. And I know for myself, I'm not like this now but when I was a younger knitter like seven years ago even I was so young seven years ago anything that was going to involve having to bust out the tapestry needle was just like oh my god sewing I don't want to sew I'm not good at hand sewing I have since gotten over that phobia and I will say grafting actually kind of helped me because once I learned how to graft and I really embraced the process I found that it was kind of magical to be able to use needle and yarn to create knit stitches in a different way. And it just opened up my repertoire of knitting and results that I could get. And I just, I believe in embracing grafting. I think the other reason though that knitters can not enjoy grafting is frankly, directions for it can feel confusing especially if you read it out it's like prep take it off and it's like you feel you ha you feel like you have to memorize a set of directions in order to graft and you can never quite remember exactly what those directions are the big breakthrough for me when it came to embracing grafting was really as usual understanding how grafting works and not thinking about it in terms of here's a step of directions that I have to follow and if I forget those directions I now have forgotten how to graft but instead to think about it is this is a process that I can think about and work my way through it's a little bit of a puzzle and I enjoy puzzles all grafting is is joining together two pieces of knitted fabric in a seamless way and the way that you make it seamless is that you're using a needle and yarn to create a new undulation of yarn between the two knitted pieces. So you're basically creating a new row of stitches. That's all it is. Let's get out of the realm of theory, which we're in right now, and let me show you the real life grafting situation. And I'm gonna take you through my thought process as I do the grafting, and hopefully this will help you understand how grafting works as well. Here I have this dish cloth. This is like my go-to knitting project. The whole reason actually I should say this video it came about was because I did get a request from one of my subscribers to show how I graft this dish cloth together. So this dish cloth is done in garter stitch. And the way that I set this up when I knit, I use a provisional cast on so that I start with live stitches and I end with live stitches. So this is a end-to-end -end grafting situation. I want to create as close as I can garter stitch, the look of garter stitch. So this appears seamless. Key number one to kind of working out what you need to do to graft your stitches together is to understand where you want your purl bumps to end up. What am I talking about? Okay, so here I have my dishcloth and on my needle are my stitches. And right now the purl bumps are sitting on the needle. The question I need to ask myself is after I'm done, with my graft, where do I want these purl bumps to end up? Do I want them to end up on the front of the work, the right side of the work, which is right here? Or do I want those purl bumps to end up to the back of the work? Well, 
if I stretch out, you can see here are pearl bumps, here's the knit row, here's my next set of pearl bumps. So what do I need? Well, right here, the row beneath the needle, those are pearl bumps, and the row beneath this needle are pearl bumps. So I need a row of knit stitches to go in between those. So I need the pearl bumps from these live stitches on the needle to end up on the wrong side of the fabric. So I'm gonna just make a note of that. Next one I'm gonna do is I am going to get my needles set up so that they are parallel to one another. And that all I see are the stitches on top of the needle. And I could set up these needles so that the wrong sides of my fabric are together, or I could do it the other way and bring it so that my right side of the pieces are together. It's strictly dealer's choice which way you wanna do it. My preference is to set this up so my right sides are together and the wrong side is facing out. So here I am, I'm set up. Now, I want you to notice something right away. My right sides are together, but when I look at my work, here is the wrong side. On This is needle one. The wrong side is facing me on needle one. This is needle two. This right side is facing me, all right? So here's another opportunity to stop and think. Where do I want my pearl bumps to end up? Well, I want both pearl bumps from both needles to end up to the wrong side of the work because on the right side of the work, I want it to appear as knit stitches. So right now I am looking at the wrong side of my fabric. So this row of pearl bumps, I'm going to want to flip towards me. And when you flip your pearl bumps towards you in knitting, that is the action of a pearl stitch. This is very important to remember, all right? When you bring the pearl bumps towards you when knitting, that you do that by using pearl stitches. This side of the fabric, this I'm looking at is the right side of the fabric here. Because if I turn this over, you can see the wrong side. So I'm looking at the right side of the fabric. Where do I want the pearl bumps from this needle to end up? Well, I want them to end up on the wrong side of the work, the wrong side of the work is over here, so I'm going to need those pearl bumps to flip away from me. When you knit and you have the pearl bumps push away from you to the back of the work, those are knit stitches. All right, so this set of stitches, I'm going to be recreating pearl stitches, and this side, I'm going to be recreating knit stitches. And this is going to bring us now to rule number two, to figuring out your grafting situation. There's two steps to grafting. There is prepping the stitch, and then there is working the stitch. Because when you graft, you are weaving in and out of your stitches, right? And when you're doing that weaving in and out, you're going to enter the stitch in one direction, go up into the stitch on the other needle, and then come back into the stitch again. So every stitch you're going to be entering into twice. So that's what the prep is. It, the prep is the first time you enter into the stitch when you graft, and then the work is the second time that you enter into the stitch. When you prep, you do the opposite of when you work. So if I'm working a knit stitch, I'm going to prep as if to purl. If I'm working a purl stitch, I'm going to prep as if to knit. So the rule is you prep opposite of what you work. All right, so let's actually start this because this will make a lot more sense as you see it happening. I have four strands of yarn here. It is again dealer's choice if you want to start your work either with your front, your needle number one, or your needle number two. It's dealer's choice. I like to start my graphs with yarn coming off of needle number two. It's just a personal choice. I use the color 
of the stitches that are on the needle. So brown is on the needle, I'm gonna use my brown yarn. Now, beginning crafting is always a little tricky. It can be confusing how to get started, but the thing to always remember is the steps. You have to prep a stitch before you can work the stitch. And since neither the first stitch on needle one or two has been worked, both those stitches need to be prepped first, right? So the rhythm goes prep, prep, work, prep, work, prep. Okay, so what stitch do I first prep? All right, when you do your prep, you want to join this stitch and this stitch, right? Well, I already have this yarn coming off of needle number two, so I'm going to first go into this first stitch on needle number one, and it's going to be a prep because we prepped first, we work second. So I'm going to prep this stitch, and I know that I need this purl bump to come towards me. That's a purl, so when I work this, I will purl when I prep it, I'm going to knit. So I'm going to enter this stitch as if to knit. So that means I bring my tapestry needle in front of the right leg, behind the left leg, and I'm going to leave this stitch on the needle because when you prep, you always leave the stitch on the needle. So I need to prep this stitch on needle number two next. Let's go through the thought process again. I need my purl bump to end up to the wrong side of the fabric, which is here, which means I need the purl bump to flip away from me. Knit stitches cause the purl bump to flip away from me. Therefore, I'm going to work a knit stitch, which means I need to prep a purl stitch. So I'm going to enter this stitch as if to purl. So I'm going to bring my needle behind the right leg and through the stitch. Now both the first stitch on needle one and two are prepped. I can start working stitches off of the needle and continue with the grafting process. Rule number three for grafting is from this point on, you're going to follow a simple pattern, which is you're going to work a stitch, then prep the stitch next to it, move to the next needle. That's the rhythm. It's work, prep, go to the next needle, work, prep, go back to the other needle, work, prep, go to the other needle. That's the rhythm, and it's the same no matter what you're doing. All right, so I'm here on needle number two. I need to move back over to needle number one to work my first stitch, and I know that I am working this first stitch as if to purl. Why do I know this? I know this because I need this purl bump to flip towards the front of the work towards me when the purl bumps move towards me, that is a purl stitch, so I'm going to work this stitch as if to purl. And when you work a stitch, that's when you take it off the needle. So I just worked this stitch, now I need to prep my next stitch. You prep the stitch that's on the same needle, okay? So I'm going to prep this stitch. I just worked this stitch as if to purl, so I'm going to prep as if to knit. Now that I've prepped this stitch on needle number one, I can go back to needle number two. Here's the stitch that I prepped, I'm ready to work it. And I need my purl bump to move to the back of the work. That's a, when you have the purl bump flip to the back of the work, away from you, that means that you're going to work as if to knit. And when you work a stitch, you take it off the needle, bring it over, and now I'm ready to prep my next stitch and I'm going to prep as if to purl. Why? Because I'm going to work this as a knit stitch and you do your prep opposite of what you work. So that's it. Now I'm going to move back to needle number one. I'm going to work this stitch as if to purl because I need the purl bump to come towards me. And now I'm going to prep this stitch as if to knit. Now I can move back to needle number two, and I'm going to work this stitch as if to knit, because I want the purl bump to move away from me to the back of the work, to the wrong side, and then I'm going to prep as if to purl. 
Oh, shoot. Got a little knot. There we go. Move back to needle number one. And I'm going to work as if to purl, prep as if to knit. Back to needle number two, work as if to knit, prep as if to purl. Back to needle one, and I'm going to work as if to, uh, oh, almost screwed it up. I almost worked as if to knit, but what happened? Well, I just prepped as if to knit, I had knit inside my head, but I remembered, wait, I need that purl bump to come towards me, which means I need to work as if to purl, and then prep as if to knit. I don't always say this out loud, although a lot of times I am mumbling this out loud, but I am just going prep, work as if to purl, prep as if to knit. And then I might work as if to knit, prep as in to purl. Grafting I find can be very um, meditative because there's just this chant I'm doing to myself as I do the graft. But there is a bit of thinking you have to do at the beginning to kind of understand what actions that you're taking, what end results you want to have. But to me, the key to that is really just getting it straight in my head. Where do I want the pearl bump of each stitch that I'm grafting together to end up? And if I just keep that in my head, I don't get lost in the graft, because sometimes you feel like you're gonna get lost in the grafting. But if you get that way, right, where you stop and all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I, I lost my place, where am I? Or maybe life happened and the cat came running through and you had to put your work down and bring it back up. If life happens, if you feel like you've lost your place in the graft, remember your thought process, right? where it's like, okay, I'm coming out of here, so I just prepped this stitch, which means by prep, if I just prepped a stitch, I'm moving back to the other needle. On this needle, I need that pearl bump to end up to the back of the work away from me, so that means I need to work this stitch as if to knit, and this stitch, I'm gonna prep the opposite and do purl. And now I'm back here, and I'm going to work as if to purl, prep as if to knit. And this is something too, you don't have to race during your grafting. Like, take it slow, you know? Each stitch, sit there, go, oh, I need that pearl bump towards me, so I need to purl. And I need this pearl bump away from me, so I need to knit. And I'm gonna just continue grafting my stitches until I get to the last stitch on needle one and needle two. This is another area. Beginning and ending a graft can always be a little bit confusing, but it doesn't need to be, all right? The key is always to remember your process. And so right now, I have two stitches left on each needle. So I just worked the second to last stitch on needle number one, which means I'm now going to prep this last stitch on needle number one. Then I will move to needle number two, work that stitch, and now I can prep the last stitch on needle number two. And now there's a decision that you can make. If you want, you could take your needles out and let that be the end of it and not complete the stitch. And because both of these, this stitch here and this stitch here are both secure. And if I turn the work over, look how seamless and gorgeous that graft is. Like, you have to really know what you're looking at to know that those are two ends, that this is a cast on and a bind off edge. Because that's how gorgeous the graft is. And no one is going to notice that that last grafted stitch isn't a complete stitch. But there are two other options. So this is the last stitch I just prepped. This is the last stitch on the opposite side. I can leave it just like this, but what I usually do is I just take the yarn and I bring it 
back into what was the last stitch on needle number one, and I work it in the direction I would have if it were still on the needle. And then I'm done. So that this last stitch that was on needle number two only gets prepped. It never gets worked. You could technically take the yarn and bring it back into the brown so that last stitch gets entered into twice. It's really a judgment call. There's no hard and fast rule about how to treat the last two stitches. I like doing the work of the last stitch on needle number one because I think it looks just a little bit cleaner than not working it at all. Um, but it's dealer's choice. It's what you like to do. This was a pretty straightforward grafting situation, truth be told, because all the stitches on needle number one were being worked the same way. All the stitches on needle number two were being worked the same way. But there are more complicated grafts that you can do, especially if you start getting into grafting together cabled fabrics or ribbing, because where you want the purl bump to end up on each stitch is going to be different. So there's a lot more thought that's having to go through. But understanding how to you work your way through that thought process is the same no matter what the grafting situation is when you're doing grafts end to end. And it goes back to the same thing, understanding where you want your purl bump. If you understand where that purl bump is supposed to end up after you finish the graft, you can work your way through any grafting situation. Rule number one, understand where you want your purl bumps to end up. When I'm talking about the purl bumps, I'm talking about the purl bumps that are sitting on your needles. Those stitches that are sitting on your needles, those purl bumps are going over the needle. You want those purl bumps to either end up on the public side of the work or the private side of the work. Where you want those purl bumps to end up will determine how you work the stitches and how you prep the stitches. Rule number two is when you're looking at your stitches on the needle, okay? Understand what side of the fabric that you are looking at. You remember, when I was doing this graft, the stitches that were on needle number one, these were the blue ones, I was looking at the wrong side of the work. I wanted the purl bumps to come towards me. That meant I needed to work them as purl bumps. But the brown section that was on needle number two, the side of the fabric that was facing me was actually the public side of the work. So I needed those purl bumps to move away from me to the wrong side of the fabric. And when you want purl bumps to move away from you, you're doing a knit stitch. Rule number three for grafting is you prep opposite what you work. So when you work a stitch as a knit stitch, you're going to have to prep it first as a purl stitch. Next rule for grafting has to do with starting and ending your work. So when you start a graft, you have to start by prepping the first stitch on both pieces of fabric. So you start with a prep prep. Once you've got those first two stitches prepped, then you're going to be into a very easy rhythm, which is you're going to be on one needle and you're going to work prep. Then you move to the back to the other needle and work prep. Move back to the one needle, work prep. Move back to needle number two, work prep. It's always the same until you get to the last stitches of the, th of the work. But the last two stitches, you know, the last stitch on needle one and the last stitch on needle two is a judgment call about whether you enter into both of them once, you enter into both of them twice, or you just enter into one of them once. It's a judgment call. It's basically what it is you want the fabric to look like. It may feel all very complicated what I just described because there's no substitution for experience. So I really encourage you, I really encourage you to get yourself into some grafting situations of your own so that you can start doing this for yourself, start wrapping your head around it. Because once you start thinking it through and doing it, 
and having that experience, you won't have to think about it quite so much. But I will say, grafting does take some thought to do. If you want a handy project to practice your grafting with, I have this as a free pattern. All you have to do to get it is to sign up for my newsletter and that will be sent directly to your inbox. So if you would like to make this dishcloth, practice some grafting, this is a really good project to do this with. This project also gives you an opportunity to work with some short rows and have a really pretty dishcloth in the end. For this video, I am going to put a blog post up to talk about my rules for thinking your way through grafting. So you're like going, okay, this was all great information, but I can't possibly remember it. Don't worry, I am going to have a blog post up so that you can reference that. You always have easy access to remember, wait a minute, what are the rules again? I don't remember. I hope this video was helpful and you enjoyed it. If so, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Sharing videos always lets the YouTube algorithm know that I am a knitting channel worth checking out. Also, if you have any questions about grafting, please let me know in the comments down below or Come join me every Sunday for Knit Tea Live. Yes, I am now live streaming on YouTube every Sunday at 11 Pacific time, which is two o'clock Eastern time. And it's really fun. Um, I get on, um, I chat with people who come to watch the live stream. We talk about what's going on in the knitting world. I show off anything special I've got going on with my needles. Um, I give a little BTS sometimes about what's happening with the YouTube channel or my blog post. And I answer any questions that you have. It's a really good time. I'd love to see you show up. If you have not already, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Hitting the notification bell will let you know whenever I upload a new video and it will alert you when the live streams begin. I hope that you have a wonderful day, evening, weekend, weeknight, whenever you may be watching this. And as always, happy health and happy knitting. Bye. Hey, I. Uh, uh, uh. Do I have my coffee? Where's my. Oh, shoot. Oh, my coffee's over there. I can't get. Oh. Mm, gotta get that. Okay. Let's get through the intro so I can get my coffee because it's over there and I can't reach it. All right. And you can do this salvage to salvage. You can do this cat, um, I've just worked. Now I need to prep my next step. So step number one, sorry. Turn the, my phone keeps beeping. Shut up. <laughs> that is the rule number what am I at? Three, four, whatever. I've been having a very hard time talking today. <laughs> very hard time. <laughs> if you want to know the truth, I'm like, I was sitting there going, I didn't really know what I was going to shoot today <laughs> until I came into the craft room. I, I had a couple of different ideas and I saw this sitting there and I remembered that a longtime subscriber of mine had asked me to do a video about how to end the graft on this and I was like why don't I just do a real life craft situation I'll call it wild <laughs> knitting in the wild <laughs>